Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to save a bunch of money on fishing tackle, making sure you get only the necessary items that you need. Um, a lot of people fish on a budget. Um, I've collected a lot of fishing tackle over the years. I've been fishing for almost 20 years now. Um, so I've slowly collected stuff, more niche specific items, uh, duplicates of baits, all that kind of stuff. But today we're gonna break down how to actually save money, stop wasting money on useless fishing gear um, or duplicates or stuff like that. Making sure you have a core tackle essentials that you need. Back when I started fishing, I could only get away with so many items. I made sure I had what worked and I caught a lot of fish doing that. Honestly, I feel I've caught less fish as I've bought more tackle because I think too much into it when I used to just go out there and fish with the stuff that I had. So today we're gonna break down how to simplify your selection. You're gonna see a lot of guys on YouTube, pros, everything like that, showing you boxes of crankbaits, deep boxes like this, just full of a million different colors, all different shades of colors and say that one might be better than the other and all that kind of stuff. Um, different sizes, everything like that. We're gonna break down how you don't really need all of that. Is it nice to have it collected over time um, and something every bass fisherman probably wants? Of course, but this is not anything that anybody needs to actually go out there and catch fish. So we're gonna break it down in today's video how you can save more money and fish on a budget. All right, so today's video is gonna be more than just the tackle itself. We're gonna talk about everything that has to do with bass fishing, all the places that you can cut some cost and fish on a little bit tighter budget or stuff that are really truly the essentials. Anything else is just kind of fluff. We're gonna start with rods, reels, and line because you have to have a rod, reel, and line to actually go fish and catch some fish. Um, I've done a couple videos on these on the essential rods that you actually need and that will be linked at the end of today's video to explain what I'm gonna talk about right now because this video would take forever if I got into all the detail. Um, but if you're getting your first rod, you gotta get a spinning rod. That's gonna be your number one. Uh, I fish just a medium action spinning rod, somewhere in that six, six to seven foot length. You can do pretty much anything finesse wise with this setup along with some other stuff. I went into more depth in that other video, but this is gonna be the first rod that you're gonna have to get if you're getting into bass fishing. If you're already into bass fishing, you probably already have this rod. I always mention how I spool mine up with braid when we're talking about line here. Fishing on a budget, braid is gonna be cheaper. You're gonna put a spool on there, but it's gonna last so much longer than any other line. Um, I've fished two to three seasons with this line that's right on here right now. And what I do is I take my braid and I'll buy smaller fluorocarbon spool leaders, which are much cheaper than buying bulk fluorocarbon to keep putting on here every season. And I'll put a fluorocarbon leader on the end of my braid. Um, and then you can actually change your leader size if you need to. But that's another thing we're gonna to touch on. So the biggest thing, a lot of times you're gonna get caught up in 12 pound test versus 14 pound test or stuff like that. And a lot of those tiny, tiny details, 80% of your fishing can be covered by cutting out all that fluff. Like there are days when you might go out there and you're dock fishing and you're gonna lose a couple extra fish around a dock if you have eight pound leader versus a 10 pound leader. But overall, you're gonna still catch fish whether you have one or the other. Um, so for me, I pick the stuff that I can get away with that's most, most likely right down the middle. So if there's a range of something, I'm gonna go right down the middle because more often than not, it'll cover the stuff that you might need lighter line for or sizes of baits, which we're gonna talk about here in a second, or it'll cover stuff that you need heavier line or bigger sizes of baits for if you're right down the middle. So for me, I go eight pound test leader. You can get one spool of eight pound test if you're fishing up on Lake Erie and you're drop shotting for smallmouth in clear water, most likely you'll get more bites with six pound test. But if you use eight pound, you're still gonna get bites. Then I can go skip docks where a 10 pound test leader might do better, um, but an eight pound will also work and I'll still catch fish. So just by doing that there, instead of having two or even three spools of fluorocarbon, which could be upwards of $100 just for that, you only have one spool of fluorocarbon for everything. Um, so that's part of the areas where I cut my cost and save some money on fishing tackle. Um, now, after you have that spinning rod, the next rod that you're gonna need to get is going to be a bait caster. Um, the first one that I would buy is going to be this guy right here, which is just a seven foot medium heavy fast action. I put a regular seven one to one gear ratio reel on here and straight 14 pound test fluorocarbon. Again, right down the middle. 
I can throw a square bill crankbait with this. I can also throw a spinner bait. I can throw a chatter bait. I can also throw a jig or a Texas rig or stuff like that. I can fish a Carolina rig on this if I wanted to. Um, it might not be the best at all of that, but it can do all of that. So this covers you for just about everything else that you might need in, until you get into some very specific stuff like glide baits, one ounce, 10, 20, 25 foot diving crankbaits, stuff like that. That's not gonna work on this rod. But I, again, 80% of the fishing can get done with this rod right here. So I put the fluorocarbon on there. So I have the braid on that rod for anything that floats um, and I can be more versatile. I put the fluorocarbon on here so I can fish bottom bouncing baits and get my bait down to the bottom for bottom contact. And then if you're looking at potentially adding a third rod to your arsenal, this would be the next one that I would go with. When I used to fish ponds, creeks, I didn't have a boat, all that kind of stuff. These were the three rods that I only ever had. And I'd carry three rods with me when I went pond fishing. This was the last one I added to my arsenal, but it's a nice addition uh, for when you need it. So this is a seven foot medium fast action. So it's a little bit lighter than that rod. Uh, it allows me to throw jerk baits in top waters. And you'll see I have the same seven one to one reel on here, but I put 30 pound braid on. Um, so you can fish stuff that you want to fish on braid. I'll use this. You could take this reel and put it on that rod and fish a swim jig or a frog or stuff like that if you need to with the braid. Um, it might not be the best in heavy cover because you only have 30 pound braid and a medium heavy rod, uh, but you can switch reels to do that. And then you can also fish some smaller crankbaits and stuff like that on here. So if you wanted to swap the braid out for like 10 or 12 pound fluorocarbon, you can fish jerk baits on here. You can fish small swim baits on here. You can fish crankbaits on here. So it covers a little bit of everything. So that's how I'm gonna set up my rods to get started to save some money there. Um, and then when we get into bait selection here, tons and tons and tons of options on baits. Like these are bluegill colored crankbaits right here. And I have even more in that box. And I mean, these just have different base coats in them overall. Like they still have the striped pattern. They have the bluegill ear um, and it, it's a square bill crankbait. This one's a chartreuse base. This one's more of an orange base. So do you really need one that's a chartreuse base and an orange base? Probably not. So let's start with some hooks and terminal tackle first because that's a really important part. Um, I keep a lot of hooks, a lot of terminal tackle, again, collected over the years. In here, the biggest thing is narrowing down what I actually need. So 90% of my fishing, I get done with wide gap hooks, extra wide gap hooks. My number one size is gonna be a three aught. And again, you can buy everything from a one aught all the way up to a seven aught, even outside of that size range but you don't need a one aught, a two aught, a three aught, a four aught, and match it perfectly to your bait. Get the three aught, it works for Senkos, it'll work for Texas rig worms, it'll work for craws, it'll work for beavers. You can do everything with that. And then if you want a bigger size, jump up to like a five or a six aught, or jump all the way down to a one aught if you need a smaller one. Don't try and buy every size in between. Cut stuff right down the middle and cut out that fluff in between and it'll make you a lot more efficient in your fishing uh, and save you a lot of money. So I'll get wide gap worm hooks is one that I always have with me. Another one that I'll always have is a good drop shot hook because I fish for smallmouth a lot. So I buy a split shot drop shot type hook and I get it in one size. I buy size one, I buy nothing else. I just buy these hooks, I'll keep this pack. When I run low, I'll order more packs. And whether it's one or two, that's about it. Um, and then I have my hooks to fish a drop shot with. If you like fishing a wacky rig, I get these VMC uh, weedless Nico hooks. I'll wacky rig with these. I can fish a Nico rig with these and I buy them in a size two and that's it. I don't buy any other sizes. It's right down the middle. It works for some smaller worms if I want a wacky rig like a four inch Senko or if I want to put a six and a half inch Divine Shaky Worm on there and fish it as a Nico rig, it still works on that too. You can also take a pair of scissors and cut off your weed guard here and have an open hook if you're not fishing around weeds and need to get some better hookups rather than buying the weedless and non-weedless versions. So there's a bunch of options you can do with that. I have tons of other hooks in here, um, different like octopus style wacky hooks. Like some of this stuff I don't even really reach for anymore. I reach for the same five things every single time because I know it works. Um, I do have like flipping hooks and stuff like that, but that's stuff that's more specific to the technique where if you're flipping a beaver, you can still put it on these wide gap hooks. 
you might not hook up as many times as you would with a uh, wide and like an uh, a flipping hook, but you'll land nine fish instead of 10 fish or whatever the ratio might be. Like you're, you're talking such a minimal number of fish that you'll lose over the course of the year, unless you're truly doing these super specific details where this is like your career, your job, you're making money doing it. If you're just out there to have fun, just you can save a bunch of money by, by paring your stuff down like that. Um, taking a look at the terminal tackle box here, whether it's jig heads, whether it's anything for that matter, um, I go light, medium, heavy is usually what I go. So like I have a bunch of worm weights in here. If I were to go back and pick what I needed, I'd pick a 1 8 ounce. That's going to do like 90% of your shallow water Texas rig fishing. I'd pick like a quarter or a 5 16 That's going to get you for your deeper water stuff. And then something like a 3 8 or half for some heavy cover flipping. And that's about it. Um, when I'm picking a nail weight, I, t I pick the biggest nail weight I can get away with. So I'll buy 1 8 ounce nail weights. I'll put the nail weight in the bait and trim it off wherever I want. If I want a 1 16 I'll cut this in half and put it in my bait. That way I'm not buying multiple packs of nail weights to put inside of a bait. You can cut a 1 8 nail weight in half and you have two 16 ounce nail weights now. So you can do stuff like that to save money. Same with drop shot weights. I keep a 3 16 or a quarter somewhere in there and I keep like a 3 8 for some deeper water. Um, as with all of my terminal tackle, you could go through my entire box here. I have the, the gamut of everything. I have all the different sizes collected over the years again. But everything in here is going to be what you'll see the ones that I use the most are the ones that are in between sizes of everything else. I reach for the same stuff more often than not. So you can save some money by buying that type of stuff off the bat. Same with your jig heads. I have a box of jig heads back here. These are my Nedrig jig heads. Um, I keep everything, I pour them myself so it's cheaper, but I keep everything from a 1 16th to a 1 quarter. If I wanted to, I could take a 1 8th and a 1 quarter or a 3 16th, and those two sizes would do everything I needed in, in Ned Rig fishing. I promise you, maybe one day out of the year, a fish will bite a 1 quarter ounce Ned Rig better than a 3 16th or vice versa. The rest of the year, they will not even notice a difference. There will not be a day that will make a difference that much that that 1 16th ounce extra in your head is going to catch you more or less fish. So instead of keeping everything, I try and keep it down, pared down. And over time, I might actually start to pare this stuff down and not keep all this tackle because it takes up a ton of space and it takes up a lot of room in the boat. Um, and it's a lot of extra weight in your boat too. So towing it is, you honestly, you could probably get better gas mileage by taking out hundreds of pounds of tackle out of your boat. Um, same on the water, everything like that. Um, it doesn't seem like it makes a big difference, but if you start taking out all these different lead weights that you never use, adds up quick. Um, and then the last thing to go over is like baits themselves. So when it comes to soft plastics, I talk about it time and time again, green pumpkin, black and blue, that's it. Buy the packs of that stuff. Um, that's really all the colors that I use. If they're sold out of green pumpkin and they have green pumpkin blue sitting right next to it and I need that bait, I'm buying green pumpkin blue. It's not going to make a difference nine times out of 10. Um, so I'm buying something with a green or watermelon base for my clear water and I'm buying something with a black or a dark colored base for my dirty water and that's it. Um, and then when you're talking about baits, I try to pick stuff that's as versatile as possible as I've talked about with the rest of everything so far. So like this bait right here, the Sixth Sense Bongo, great bait for actually flipping a Texas rig. I'll drag this on the bottom, I'll flip it into bushes like a beaver. I've honestly almost replaced my beavers entirely with this guy because then I can take it and put it on my jig trailer as a jig flipping jig trailer, or I can put it on a swim jig trailer as a swim jig trailer. I can put it on a chatter bait. You can do numerous things with one bait. So then I have packs of baits that are very versatile. I'll get Senkos, they're very versatile. Um, any type of like a straight tail, trick worm, stuff like that. Those are baits that are versatile. Anything that you can do multiple things with, and then they don't in the bongo, but say you have a bait like the beavers, for example, they might come in a small, medium, and a large size, cut it right down the middle. The medium size is going to do your fishing 90% of the time. Um, and then once you have that entire base of tackle built up, that's when the next following years, as you keep evolving into the sport and getting more into fishing, you buy the extra stuff, the small beavers, the large beaver to get a big bite in the tournament one day. That's when I start building on that stuff. And that's where those baits come into play. 
I'm only fishing them 10% of the year. I'm not going to go spend a bunch of money on them to save myself for 10% of the year. Um, jigs, same thing. You can either split down the middle on size or by a couple sizes that work. So like I keep half ounces, usually my go-to size. Sometimes I fish a three eighths. Um, so you can get both if you, if you really like to fish jigs or stuff like that. Um, and then green pumpkin base, black and blue base. That's it. That's how I'm going to fish those jigs. Um, I could get away with two jigs. I'd buy a half ounce and a green pumpkin and black and blue, and I'd get away with them as long as I don't lose them. And then when it comes to crankbaits and stuff like that, a lot of that's going to depend on your diving depth, where you're fishing stuff uh, around there. Any type of hard bait is going to be a little bit more specific to your region. So for us up here, we never fish ledges, anything like that. I never fish 20 foot diving crankbaits. If you go in my garage right now and look at all my crankbaits, nine, 90 percent of them only dive 15 foot or less. There's a few out there that are 20 footers that I've collected over fishing Pickwick Lake and Kentucky Lake and stuff like that, but we don't fish that way up here. Um, so I don't even purchase them. Other places, you might never use a square bill. You might only fish mid-depth diving crankbaits and deeper. So then don't, don't buy square bills. Um, and that's specific to where you're, you're from. Um, and then when you actually pick where you're from and you, you dial in on the bait you're looking for, um, sizing, split the middle, um, a lot of times you can use your line size if you're buying different lines to alter the depth your bait goes. Um, but usually I don't pay too much attention to that. I'd rather purchase a $5 bait, $10 bait, than swap $20 spools of fluorocarbon on my rod every once in a while just to get it to alter the diving depth. Um, and then color wise, uh, most of the time for all of my hard baits, Red is always nice if you fish in the springtime, stuff like that, but that's more of a specific color. So if that's any color you're gonna leave out, that would be the one. I, that's hard for me to say because I catch so many fish on red crankbaits. Um, it would probably be actually my first pick for up here in the Northeast um, or anywhere for that matter because when that water gets dirty and that black and red color contrasts so well, you catch a lot of fish that way. Uh, but other colors that you can have is like, bluegill colors and like we talked about like this bluegill color has an orange base so you can get a bluegill crankbait that has an orange base and it'll cover both that dirtier water with that orange flash and if you have a bluegill spawn you can catch them on this bait this one has a chartreuse this is a really bright color so this will work for when they're eating bluegills uh, but it'll also work when that water is dirty and you need something to stand out um, any type of shad pattern stuff like that usually my base colors i keep are something shad patterned something chartreuse something red it, those three colors will cover everything it, it pick your favorite color out of those the shade doesn't matter um, another thing i've started doing recently is finding muted down versions of a different color that can cover both so like this color i think it's called giant juice um, it has like a chartreuse faded line and a purple back and a white belly. So it would work if the water is a little bit stained and you need that chartreuse color, but also even in clear water, it's not super bright like this guy here, neon yellow, um, that you wouldn't catch fish that are just feeding on shad with this bait right here. So then I could get rid of the shad and the chartreuse and take this guy and then I could pick a red and I'd have a pretty good base with just these two color crankbaits right here. Um, so that's just the way to analyze it. There's no perfect science to it, but if you're looking to fish on a budget, that's the way I look at things um, and try and pick out the most necessary pieces of tackle to actually catch the most amount of fish on the cheapest budget, uh, least amount of tackle that I need to carry with me. So if you enjoyed today's video, you wanna check out that rod video where I really break down what you need, check that one out right there. Hit the subscribe button down below. And if you're interested in purchasing any of these Sixth Sense products, if you use my code Quince on the website, you'll save 10% off your order and you'll be helping out the channel a ton to keep making videos like this. Thanks for watching.